Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop over on the metal side, Studio M. Got the brakes off of the uh, Oliver wagon here. Uh, JR's getting ready to pull it in the parade. When is that, tomorrow? St. Patrick's Day parade, yeah. Yeah, uh, JR's just off camera here. He's gonna have Oliver pulling this thing tomorrow. Well, I've already replaced the master cylinder and filled it up with fluid. And the master cylinder's working, you can tell that, but there's nothing getting to the wheels here. That means these wheel cylinders right here are froze up. So I've done this kind of work before, but it's been a while. So I've got to take the brakes off, take these wheel cylinders off, and see if we have to hone them or whatever we have to do. Okay, it's a little difficult to film this because this is down so low and the camera is on a tripod and it don't want to go much lower. Basically, I got to take this whole thing apart. These are uh, retainer springs here that hold the brakes in and you know, I don't have all the fancy special tools for all this. I just grab it with a pair of needle nose and push it off there. Like I said, I've done this a lot in my life. It's just been a long time since I've done it. I remember doing it on pretty much every car I ever had growing up. And just taking all the parts off of this and keeping them where I can find them. I know where they go when we got to put them back together. So now I got to take this brake assembly off because we've got to get to this, this brake cylinder or wheel cylinder. I call it a wheel cylinder, but it's really a brake cylinder, I guess is what you call it. Doesn't really matter what you call it, what matters is if you know what to do with it. I haven't done this in a while and every one of these is a little different, so I'm just going to take a picture of it before I take it apart and then I'll know exactly how it goes back together. Won't be confusing that way. Probably should have taken this off before I took those other parts off. It would have been a little bit easier, but I'll get it one way or the other. Ugh, that is tight. One strong spring. There it is. That'll be a piece of cake to put back on. Yeah, these are completely rusted shut. They're just rusted. That's what it is. These wheel cylinders, or brake cylinders, whatever you want to call them, they're, the cylinders are corroded over and uh, it's going to take a little work to get them uncorroded all these parts to get to that so there's a gazillion parts there and uh, now there should be two bolts on the back of this of course this is going to make it leak fluid uh, I don't think there's any chance of us moving these it wouldn't I guess it won't hurt to try it but you know if we could tap them loose and maybe they'll move but I don't think it's hardly worth trying honestly I'll give it a shot though just in case Okay, I'm going to just tap on this right here and see what happens. I don't think it's going to move because it's rusted on both sides. I truly don't think it's going to move. Yeah, it's, it's, it's froze solid as a... I don't want to hit it too hard and bust something. Cause we got to have it to put it back together. Not even sure how we're going to get this all apart, to be honest with you, because it's so corroded. I'm thinking I can just use uh, fluids and things to loosen that corrosion up, take a wire brush, and then eventually push those out of there. It's a total guess, really. I haven't done it in so long, I can't remember exactly how to do it. Well, this one's made different than any of them I've seen. In the past, all the ones I've taken apart had two bolts on the back here, and you just take those two bolts off and this pops off. But this one's cast up around here, it looks like, so this is all gonna have to come off.
Well, I got a one and a quarter inch socket on this thing and I think it fits it. It's kind of rusty and hard to tell, but. One thing about this tool, it'll either take it off or it'll break it. One of the two. <laughs> this tool is one powerful thing. It's spinning this. Oh, it's spinning the whole thing. Guess I have to get a vice grips or something put on there. I can't even see it. Well, I ain't never worked on one quite like this before, but I've got a vice grips on there and I don't know if that'll hold it or not. Yep, it did. Okay. Well, there you go, there's your wheel cylinder coming off. Except that it's still connected with the line. And that's my worst nightmare there, is disconnecting that line. When we disconnect that line, it could break it easy. They, those lines are old and who knows. Disconnect it up here where it's not gonna break. Yeah, I don't think we can get it out that way, can we? Feed it right through the hole. I don't think you can. Might be able to, but I don't think That's you can because hole. of this. If you could get off of this, then you could. I don't think you can get past this to get this out. Well, I'm going to have to do some pondering to figure out what's going on there. I'm, I think my knee was in front of the camera, but basically we're trying to get this off. Uh, the brake line's attached to this. This won't come far enough to let the brake line go through this big hole is the problem. At least I think that's what the problem is. I wonder if this goes out after. I wonder if we can drive that out. No, because it's got something behind it, don't it? Got something behind it. But that feels like that's a little bit loose too. Well, we'll have to do some pondering and I'll figure out the next step. I decided not to try to take this line apart on the back right now and the reason is because it's really rusty and I'm afraid we're going to break the line and if we break the line then we got a bigger job yet. So I thought I'd try this first. Try to hold that on there and I'll try to turn this. If it pops out of there, it's going to probably come out with some force. I'm afraid I'm going to break something if I keep going. I'm pushing pretty hard. Let's take this off for a minute and let me look at it in a minute. I think I'm going to try shocking it again. Need a round bar with a round end that we can... Well, this is uh, not the way you're supposed to do this, but I don't think we got much to lose here. Question. You said earlier you can't compress fluid. Would it help if I opened the line? Well, I'll just throw the fluid out. Well, that would allow movement easier, right? Well, I'm trying to get that one to push this one out. I don't know. It moved. Yeah, it moved this one too. It's moving them now, finally. Yeah. All right, well, Great again. yeah, but also, uh, um, I'm afraid to tell you to do this, but press on those brakes lightly. You know, don't go crazy on them. Nothing. No. We're pushing on the brake to see if it, if the wheel cylinder moves at all. They're, they're moving when I'm tapping on them here. It ain't moving real good, but it's moving. Yeah, it's moving. Oh, 
Like I said, this ain't the way to do it, but it's the way we're doing it. I think I'll get some sandpaper and sand these insides, edges as much as possible. I got some 220 wet or dry. Push, push the cylinder one way and sand. I bet this one here's more this way. I'll go this one first. Ah. Cleaned a little bit. Wow, it's almost coming out now. That's that helped a lot. Let me clean this side on over here. We'll see. If we keep going back and forth, we might be able to get it to work. Afraid it's gonna cause the wheel cylinders to leak, but they ain't working anyway, so what do you do? Let's beat it back the other way for a little bit. Now, I think before I take them all the way out, I want to keep cleaning this up as much as possible to, so that it doesn't screw it up too bad. I'm afraid if I run it, push it out over these rusty edges, it'll ruin the little pieces. And I doubt we're going to get a rebuild kit for this international brake cylinder. Today, probably could order one, or they might even have one in stock. You never know. Maybe a call. No. Let's just see if we can make this work. I think this is going to work, actually. There's not that much to these things. Looks complicated. Doesn't look complicated to me. Pretty straightforward. Ah. <sighs> I think I'll just drive it out of this side this time and see what happens. You never know. If we can get them out, I think we can hone it really easy and not have much of a trouble. Yep, here it comes. It's coming. Did it catch it or anything? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do. Get me a bucket. Yeah, get me something, a pan or something to sit under here because it's going to probably leak. Well, there's no telling what's going to come out of this one. I'll drive this the rest of the way because I ain't never, I haven't done it this way ever. It's about to pop out of there. Did you come over there and catch it? Got it. <clears throat> well, there's, well, that's the rubber piece. That's the seal, probably. Maybe I should just keep driving it out. I don't know. Drive it all the way through, maybe? I don't know. Never done it this way, but there's first time for everything. There with the seal. That's the pressure. Yep. There we go. Another seal and the other piston. Eureka! Okay, we got her out. We got all the parts here collected. It actually looks like it's going to be salvageable. We'll make it work. You know, this is just a horse cart. It, it ain't a high-speed car going down the highway. So I think it's going to work well enough to stop stop the buggy. But we're going to have to hone this cylinder first. That's the first thing we're going to do. So let me get set up to do that. All right, I sprayed this down with a little bit of the uh, PB Blaster, and then we're going to go in here and, and uh, hone this. I think this will fit. Whoops. I had it in there before, but now on camera, of course, it don't want to fit in there. <laughs> it fit right in there before. There it is. Looking better. 
Let me see if I can get it in this side because it's not long enough to go all the way through. Okay, what I'm doing there is rubbing it around in different places and get making it uh, make contact all the way around. Try it from this side. Spray it down again. I'm trying to make contact all the way around and I'm I'm putting pressure on it all the way around, you know, like pulling on this side, the top, the bottom, this other side. That's putting pressure all the way around. So now Let's just take this and clean it out and see what it looks like. And if we see a lot of mess in there. Show them and explain them what your little invention is. What I was using for a hone is just a block of wood. You know, I just wrap sandpaper around it and the sandpaper then curls around there and spreads out and, you know, sands the inside of there. You have to wrap your sandpaper the direction that works best with your drill. Otherwise you'd be going backwards. But let's see how that looks. Does it look like we can see through it? Is it shiny? There's still... Let me see. Is that it's, grease? Yeah, it's still a little on the bottom. Still a little bit, you know, a little bit of a mess in there. It's a little bit pitted like, you know, just lightly. It ain't real bad. I've seen them worse than this. This is the first one I found when I was looking through my drawer. Actually, it'd be better if this was a little bit smaller and the, there was a lot more sandpaper that would spread out. But it's working. I actually think that's probably going to be good enough. I don't think it's going to need anything more than that. Again, because it's a buggy. It's not a high-speed automobile. If it was going 70 miles an hour down the highway, we'd be replacing this whole wheel cylinder. Yeah. And really, Oliver can stop a load himself with his britching strap, but this is just to help on the bigger, longer hills so he doesn't have to work so hard to hold us back. This kind should, of in case of emergencies too. It feels good. It, it really does feel good. I think it's going to be fine. I, I do think it's just going to be fine. We'll clean off all these internal parts and have to get them loaded back in there, of course. Should we see if brake fluid's coming out first? I can feel the hole up there where the brake fluid would have to come out. I don't think that could be an issue. I don't think it could, but as soon as I say that, of course, it will be. That's why I was Wondering if it's worth risking air or putting air in it to find out. Well, you can press it lightly. It's, well, I'm pretty sure we're going to see fluid come out. Tell me when you see it. Now, uh, I see a light drip coming down, but I'm pushing hard. Do it again, then, I guess. Oh, oh lots right. of it came out. That's probably good. I think it blew up rust and all kinds of junk. It broke something loose and also just gave. Yeah, it probably was worth doing, I guess. Should I do it a little more? No. <laughs> I think I'll do it again. As long as we know we got fluid coming through there, it'll... Yeah, it definitely. It was just all at once. It pop, and it felt like yeah. it was shooting a spit wad out of a straw. All right, so I'm going to clean these up a little bit, too. If there was a way to hold them, I'd put them in my lathe and you know, sand them lightly, but, or use scotch Brite on them or something. But I think that's what we're gonna do is clean up, clean up these parts and then we'll put it back together. I'll show you what it looks like once we get them cleaned up. Well, I got all the parts nice and cleaned up. The cylinder itself is honed now, so we need to put it together. I'm looking for oil or something. I had oil. Squirty, squirty I had like a little three in one oil up there. Is it still there? I got brake fluid. Oh, give me that. That'd be fine. I'm just going to use uh, brake fluid itself as a kind of a lubricant in here. 
I'm going to put it all in from one side, just like the way we took it out. Now it's got air pressure. It's actually pushing the other one out. I think we're good. I'm pretty sure that's going to work. At least now it, it moves. Okay, well now we have to prove that I know how to put this all back together. And that might be a lot to prove. First thing is I don't have that lock on this, but you know what? I don't think that lock matters on this particular installation. That little locking key that goes on here, I don't think that's going to matter at all for this. So I'm just going to tighten it down. There, she's tight. Of course, I blew the piston back out of her there. Vibrated it out. Wow, this is going to be fun. I haven't done this in a very long time, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and clean up parts as we go uh, over on the wire wheel. Um, I don't think it really matters, but on the other hand, it won't hurt nothing. Getting all this to fit back together is a, is a jigsaw puzzle for sure. It's absolutely, you know, just about a nightmare, really. Try, I'm just trying not to get too far ahead of myself. Let me assess all my parts here and see what I want to put on first. Well, off camera, we bled this cylinder a little bit uh, so that we could squeeze these in there tighter. I think that's going to be critical to getting this back together. It ain't going to go together easy, I can tell you that right now. I'll probably be doing trial and error on just about every piece. These are not any good, we know that, but they're better than not having anything, I guess. And that's as good as we've got for now. Again, it's just an old wagon. Then these little keepers go on. One of, them, one of them's missing a keeper. This one had one because it's got a circle. Now these keepers, most people have some special tool for this. My special tool is my hands, generally. Although, I gotta be honest, they're not as nimble as they used to be. I used to be able to do this, just stick it on there and twist it. But I can't do it now, I don't think. Can't get it to line up is the biggest problem. Yeah, that's it. He just wasn't holding his mouth right. <clears throat> well, I had it there. I still can't get it to spin though. It does not want to spin. It was a lot easier 20 years ago when I had strength in my hands. I can still get it on there, but I cannot turn it with my fingers. I still can't tell if it's turned right. It, it turned. It turned a quarter turn or better. Well, I know, but I still can't really honestly tell. It looks like it's right. <sighs> Piece of cake. See, that goes up like that. That's where it's supposed to be. But I let them down there until I get them hooked up. I'll probably have to let that one back down. Okay. All right, so that one's held, sort of held in place. Now we'll try to do the same thing to this other one. It's sort of headed back to the right place. We've got a bunch of other parts here. I'm mostly just springs now. Now the problem is I can't remember how these all go. And so I'll have to look at the camera again and the picture. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick that I taught myself years and years ago. When it comes to putting a tight spring on a pin like this, you take a Phillips screwdriver and you put these little V notches in on here like this. And you can slide this up here and slide it right over. At least that's the theory. Let's see if it works this time. It's always worked before. Make sure this yeah. Works first time every time. So there you go. There's your tip for the day. Make sure you squint while you do it for eye protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except that we did it again. 
We did it again. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> I told you that would eat my lunch. This thing here, I knew was going to be the thing that got in my way. That should have been on there first. Oh, I tell you, we put that on there 10 times at least, and it keeps falling off. So now i got to take this back off. And I'll get to show you my tip two times that way. Where's the better pliers? This... Okay, I knew that was going to do that. I, I would have bet a thousand dollars that that would have done that. Okay, so we'll try my tip again and see if it works the second time. Could it possibly work two times in a row? Yes. Now we got to go down. There's some more springs and things down here. Let me look at the picture again. Just doing one thing at a time. Okay, this is what the, I guess you'd call a brake adjuster. It's what uh, adjusts the tension of, the, of these uh, pads. It, they, it spreads them out. I know it goes on here, something like this. Can I get it on here is the question. Yep, I think I can. All right, so that goes like that. This goes like this. This is what sits on there and keeps that from spinning. There's another spring somewhere that I have to remember where it goes. Okay, I know where it goes. This other spring hooks on to either here or, yeah, I guess it hooks on here. Let me triple double check that. It looks like that's right. Yeah, that's right. It goes on something like that and hooks up here. Now, I can't hardly use my little trick on that so I just use my strong fingers got that one on there that should keep this from spinning one way and only let you adjust it one way now we got this spring that goes up here like so and goes up here and now we get to use the Phillips screwdriver trick yet again so you're gonna to get to see it for three times in a row Remember to squint. Well, it didn't work that time. This one here is kind of cocked a little bit. It doesn't want to go lay flat on the screwdriver. There it is. That's it, I think. See, it wasn't that tough. It ain't that hard. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see how many leftover parts we have. We only have one on purpose. <laughs> we only have one on purpose. This, this one here I left out on purpose because it was just a lock for this thing up here and who gives a rip on a buggy? So it's not a big deal. It's not going to go anywhere and I don't even think it would go anywhere on a car. Uh, so it's for sure not going to go anywhere on a buggy. We've got our bearings to put back in. I guess we might as well grease the bearings and get those ready to go in. So uh, we'll get that cleaned up and I'll show you how that goes together. JR packed the uh, bearing and I'm setting the seal in place and then I'm going to drive it home. Now when I say seal I use that term very loosely in this case. It's just more of a keeper than it is a seal. That's about as good as it's going to get I have a feeling. Okay now we can put this wheel back on, hopefully. And you can tell it's not hitting the brakes at all. I'm probably blocking the view, but anyway, we've got the washer on there now, and hopefully we can screw this on. We're probably gonna have to adjust the brakes like crazy. I probably should have adjusted them some more. Probably wouldn't have hurt to adjust them because just who knows if we can even get to the adjuster on this thing and now that I think about it this is so loose I better just try to adjust the brakes we'll just hopefully like I said there's a lot of trial and error so we put the wheel on there and it was obviously really loose that means that we need to adjust this out so that this can be a little tighter it'll be easier to adjust it right here than it would be to do it from the inside under the vehicle.
like always, it's harder than it should be. Let me get these pliers. I think I can adjust it better with the pliers. All right, I've opened it up quite a bit. I don't know if I've got it enough, but I'm going to test the fit. It should feel almost snug going on here. Oops, I knew that was going to happen. Still, that's a little better. I think we can go some more, and it'll just make our life easier later. I guess they have to be the same on both sides, right? So that each side is catching this. It's better if they're pretty close. <clears throat> there you go. Now we're just about to. That that might be a hair too tight. That's okay. I'd rather have it a little too tight than not tight enough here. There we go. I think that's perfect. That's pretty close to where we're going to want it. Yeah, you can hear it rub just a little bit, and that's what you want to hear. That's pretty close. It probably needs a little tighter than that, but it'll probably work right there, even. What you do on these kinds of things is you tighten them up reasonably tight. I'm going to tap this in. getting it in there make sure it's in there and then make sure that's pretty tight and then you don't really want it that tight you want to back it off just a little bit so we'll back it off a little bit like that and that's about where you want it now we need to put a cotter pin through it and I think the cotter pin goes through right there we probably ought to just get a new cotter pin okay I inserted a new cotter pin in there and I have to bend it around. What I do is just take and grab a hold of the back side of the axle like that and pull the pin down to it. Bends it around tight to the axle that way. It's not sticking out, hitting anything. We didn't have a cap for this, right? Mm -hmm. Just had the hub cap. Alright, let's get the wheel. Wouldn't hurt to spray them down with a little WD or something. All right, I'm just about, just about done. One of these is broke off. If you're wondering why the bolt pattern looks kind of funny, again, it's wagon, not a high-speed automobile. I think we're good. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll spin this uh, tire now and then we'll see if the brakes work. Very deep, but yeah. Try it again. It locked it up, but I think we got to bleed the brakes. I think that's what our problem is. So we'll get to that a little bit later. Well, my friends, I didn't show uh, replacing all the brake uh, cylinder stuff in this side here or rebuilding it, I should say. But we did exactly the same thing over here that we did on that side that you did see. The other thing that I didn't show you was they, they have... Uh, kind of giving it a quick paint job and uh you know put their uh logo there their youtube logo on there and the other thing you didn't see was that i had replaced this master cylinder if you don't know what a master cylinder is it's the thing that you push the brake pedal and that plunges into the cylinder and that fluid then gets forced down this line and that's what closes the brakes on the back wheels they're getting ready for their parade. Uh, they've got it loaded up. 
I don't know what you call that now. I can't think of it. But anyway, there's the part that goes around Oliver in the back of the truck. And looks like they're in here fixing Oliver up for the parade also. So we might as well take a look at that. Oh, they're getting him all dolled up, making him look pretty. There goes the string works channel. <laughs> They're videoing while I'm videoing. Dueling YouTube, we're gonna get uh, infringement strikes because I'm gonna be on your channel and you're gonna be on my channel at the same time. Yeah. So, anyway, they're getting it all ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.